For some in the White House, Sunday seemed like the first day of the rest of Donald Trump's presidency. By Friday, it was clear that while the cloud of Robert Mueller's special counsel investigation had lifted, the pervasive disarray that marked most of Trump's time in office was not going anywhere. A sudden healthcare decision made after heated Oval Office disagreements along with a reversal on education funding, a confusing sanctions mystery and still unfilled cabinet posts revealed the chaotic practices and decision-making that have colored Trump's term until this point are still ever-present. Instead of clearing the decks, the end of the Mueller probe has only thrown a fractious West Wing policy and messaging operation into sharper relief. That's left some White House aides expressing regret the investigations and wasn't matched with a more effective strategy to harness the momentum into advancing Trump's agenda. And GOP lawmakers are scratching their heads at a healthcare push few believe makes political sense. That's not exactly what Republicans and administration policy aides had in mind when it was announced last weekend the Mueller probe was over. Many hoped the investigations and might lead to an era of newly effective governing, a turning point for a president no longer preoccupied with an encroaching investigator. Exuberant officials and a buoyant president spent the week cheering the initial results of Mueller's investigation, as laid out in a letter from Attorney General William Barr. In a late afternoon gathering last Sunday, aides convened in press secretary Sarah Sanders' office for a champagne toast after the attorney general's chief of staff phoned Emmett Flood in Palm Beach with the president to brief him on the report. The intimate gathering of White House staffers was a sign of the relief that flooded through the West Wing after the stress of an investigation that loomed for years was lifted. But the days that followed Sunday's champagne clinking in Sanders' office came as a surprise to multiple people in the West Wing, according to interviews with half a dozen officials and Trump associates. There was no Rose Garden celebration ceremony. Trump gave no speech declaring vindication in the East Room. Instead, he made brief remarks before he climbed the steps of Air Force One and was whisked away to Washington.